Now, I've got, I've got a lot of questions in the last few months about Antichrist. Why is there no Antichrist? Everybody believes there's going to be an Antichrist, a, fi a physical person that will be, I guess, defined and easily visible to be seen through Scripture, if you're still around, depending on what theory you associate with, that will identify this person as the Antichrist. Of course, there's nowhere in Scripture that says the Antichrist. Now, they base it upon this Antichrist or beast out of the book of Revelation chapter 13. It is usually their starting point. So go there real quick. i got about 15 or 20 minutes. I'm going to go a little longer tonight, but you can stay with me. Tomorrow's Columbus Day here in the United States of America, and some of you might be off anyway from either your job or whatever. So you can stay up late tonight. And I stood upon the center of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, upon his head the name of blasphemy. Now, I've covered a lot of this information before. If you never heard it before, go back in the archives in the last day series. If you never listened to this before, you should start at number one and work your way up. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. He's describing general kingdoms now of the past. And his feet were as a feet of a bear and his mouth as the mouth of a lion and the dragon gave him power and his seat and great authority now you don't have to go there but in revelations chapter 7 we are given a description of the general territory or kingdom of a past beast starting in daniel chapter 7 it says in verse 3 it says and four great beasts came up from the sea <clears throat> Diverse from one another. The first was like a lion. We have that description in Revelation chapter 13, verse 2. The first beast was like a lion and had e eagle's wings, and I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked. And it was lifted up from the earth and made them stand upon his feet as a man, as a man's heart was given to it. What Daniel was seeing is the kingdom of Babylon. And then it goes on to verse 5. And behold, another beast, a second like to a bear, and it raised up. Now that describes the Medo-Persia Empire. That came after and defeated the Babylonian Empire. And then after that, you'll have another beast. And after this, I beheld, and lo, another like a leopard, which had upon his, the back of his four wings of a fowl. The beast also had four heads, and the meaning where it's given to it. And if you jump to verse 17, same chapter. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings or kingdoms, which shall rise out of the earth. Now, my question is tonight. We have, and get, I'm going to go to the board here in a minute, so get ready to go there with me. We have a definition throughout Scripture. What beasts defined as? It never defined an individual. The only closest thing to that was the little horn, which we already covered. But bottom line is, why change the definition of beasts and what it means throughout Scripture when we get to Revelation chapter 13? So you can subscribe to a Christian science fiction theory that puts Antichrist as a beast as an individual that controls an area. Now, the spirit of Antichrist is everywhere. And it's been that way for thousands of years. And he's controlled kingdoms. The, sp uh, the, the spirit of Antichrist has controlled kingdoms. Nothing new about that. It'll control the last eighth beast that I believe exists today. Now, I'm going to the board. We have... In Scripture, beasts. Now, <clears throat> what was the first beast in Scripture that we encounter? Even though I'm not referring to that in this particular chapter, was Egypt. That was a beast or kingdom. Now, I'm going to make a point here in a second. Two, what was the second? The Assyrian Empire. Three, then came the Babylonian Empire, then came Medo-Persian Empire, 
Then came Roman Empire, which is not mentioned, by the way, in Revelation chapter 13, verse 2, is it? Because that beast was destroyed and is dead. Daniel declares that back in the seventh chapter. Then after the Roman Empire, we have... Um, no, I'm wrong here. Hang on a minute. I jumped the gun. Roman Empire is not this one. I forgot Alexander the Great and, the, and his father Philip. The Grecia Empire. Then we have the Roman Empire. I'm running out of board. Then we have the first, let's just call it Jihad, followed by the last beast, the second Jihad. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight Jihads, correct? Now, what justifies Revelation chapter 13 to change the definition of a beast? Now, Scripture doesn't change it. Man-made traditions and their doctrine, doctrines about the future, mostly, that still has not happened yet, has produced these false doctrines. Now, what justify these verses according to the Christian science fiction theories and teachers out there that somehow this eighth beast or the beast that's referred to in Revelation chapter 13 is to be supposedly the Antichrist? Now, most of the Christian science fiction people, now some of them are starting to use this idea that maybe the, the Antichrist will come from the Middle East somewhere and he'll be part of the eighth beast. Well, Thanks for joining the party eventually, but you're still off in your theories. Now, keep it on there for a second as I go back and forth. Now, what justifies any of this? I mean, if you, look, if you really look at, at this board, if you look at this board, you have Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medio Persia, Grecian, Roman, First Jihad, Second Jihad. Now, these beasts, we know, for instance, in this beast, there were dozens upon dozens. I think it was maybe 80 pharaohs. I might be off of my numbers. Thereabouts. Throughout the whole kingdom of the Egypt beastly empire. The Assyrian empire. Multiple leaders that would, could be con considered as the Antichrist in their day. Babylon, starting with, actually even before Nebuchadnezzar. But bottom line, many leaders there. Let's just put leaders. Medo-Persian, same thing. Grecian, at least two. Then it was broken up into four different separate kingdoms. So you had many different leaders. Roman Empire, well, you know how that many Caesars, starting with Julius and Augustus following him, and then the many Caesars, throughout the Roman Empire's existence for 400 and some odd years. First Jihad, same thing. In the Islam-based faith produced by Muhammad. Now the second Jihad, same thing. Just a continuation, a, re a reborn, brought back to life, continuing beast similar to that of the first jihad, but now the second jihad, let's just call it that. Now, you have many and multiple leaders in all these beastly kingdoms. Why do we get to the eighth beast, the beast that's referred to, that covers a, a geographical territory where the leopard, the leopard, by the way, in scripture, is the Grecian Empire. The bear is the Medo-Persian Empire. And of course, Babylon would be the lion. Got it? So this eighth beast will encompass these three general geographical areas 
and kingdoms or nations within that area. Could they have a solidifying leader? Sure, but most likely there will be multiple leaders. It doesn't make it an antichrist. Nowhere in scripture it says they're an antichrist. In that case, there was antichrist throughout history in the kingdoms of these beasts. And not just one or two, hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of antichrists. If that's the way you can define it now in this last day, you cannot change the definition of the beast. You go to, well, it says in Scripture, Revelation chapter 13, you can come back to me now. And I saw one of his heads, and it were wounded to death, sort of the word if, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast, and they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Circle so the word him. And there was given unto him, circle so that word him, a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power is given unto him, circle so that word him. Over you go, verse 6, circle so the word them. Seventh verse, circle so the word it, him. Eighth verse, him, and so forth. Well, that's all fine and dandy to use it in that kind of translation, trying to communicate that this is a personal being. And that's what the King James and other translations give you the impression. But that's not what the original says. You could have multiple translations of what those words mean. See, by describing it as a him, you're personalizing it. And that's why if you remember, when I was teaching on this much earlier in the series, I said, circle, scratch those out and put it. It. Because if you really want to know the truth, you could take any of these words that I told you to circle him, them, it, or him again, and him again, and it could mean one of three meanings. Actually, actually more than one of three meanings. Four or five meanings. It could mean a her. Well, that's not, why not call Antichrist a her? The she-devil works for me. Not really. Because it's not a she. It's not a him. It can be a them, but I could describe it as an it. An it. It's not an individual person. Now, when you speak about the false prophet, I believe it can be an individual person. And it... That person was Muhammad. I've covered that before, and I'll be coming back to that as we m march through in the Moon God series and get to actual Muhammad itself. I call it it, but it really is him. So, Egypt, go back to the board, Assyria, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, Roman, Islamic First Jihad, which the First Jihad, by the way, if you remember, which only had power for about 152 years. And it was wounded by Charles of Montel in 732 A.D. Remember that? Well, the first jihad, if you really think about it, it still had some influences, especially in the Ottoman Empire as it continued on. But you've got to remember what the purpose was in that first jihad. is to get all the way to Britain and the most western portions of Europe to kill what? Satan knew what he was doing the possibility of the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ ever spreading and using an Ephraim and NASA to be the main force of getting it done to prepare for his second advent. If that didn't happen, if that seventh beast did not get wounded, and put it, put it, put it in its place, Right now, all of you, including myself, probably bowing down to, to the moon god, showing our own moon to the rest of the world. That's just facts, my friend. That's just facts. Now, wealth through oil healed the beast, the seventh beast, and became the eighth beast, which that oil and that wealth allowed the wounded, the wounded beast to be healed and it started the second Islamic Jihad, the eighth beast, the last beast on that board. By the way, I gave you the wrong figures because now I remember. There's over 332, and I like to be factual because I'll be checked. 
approximately, depending who you study, is 332 pharaohs, which anyone could have been an antichrist except maybe the one that was under the council of Joseph when he went into Egypt. And possibly even the first, what they consider Pharaoh Abraham, which I will tie very interesting information in history, corrected information in history, when I go back to Joseph and Hotep. I ain't going to start where I started last time. This time I'll start with Abraham. Now, <clears throat> and there was, I think there was 95 Roman Empire em emperors or Caesars or whatever they were called during the different times of their existence. On and on, there is over 100 Babylonian kings, easily. Any of these be called Antichrist. What John is relaying here is a geographical area in verse 2 in chapter 13 of Revelation where this final beast would be governing from probably as a unified kingdom, even though they're still the separate nations, but they're unified against what? Israel. And not just Israel, they're in the Middle East. As they accomplished, their final goal is to take global control with everyone bowing down to Islam in the process, destroying every Jew and Israelite, no matter where they're located, but the focus will be primarily in that little nation in the Middle East with its extension on Ephraim and the powerhouse and his brothers behind it. That's what's happening, folks. To change the definition of what a beast is is to change Scripture's definition of what a beast is. And the only reason why they changed because that's the only way they could fit it in in their Christian science fiction doctrine. That's the only way they can do it is by changing the definition. There's no other possible way. They'll make up their cute little timelines and history to try to fit it in, but it still breaks down. They have to change the definition of what a beast consists of. It has to go from a kingdom really to a person. And only a person has never worked that way before in history. Why now? Including the seventh, which is a, the eighth is just a wounded seventh beast that was healed. If there was no Antichrist back then, why now? It's the same beast, but just been healed. It doesn't make any sense. Of course, most of these Christian science fiction theories that developed never developed the foresight what the seventh and eighth beast was. They thought the seventh beast was something that didn't even happen yet in most cases, but it already did happen. They never thought Islam was part of the picture and Muhammad. So it changes, it throws a wrench into their theory and it screws them all up. I'm sorry. It doesn't fit. In scripture it never did it never will and the I'll finish with this come back to me by going to 1st John chapter 2 verse 18 let me remind you what is referred to as the Antichrist little children verse 18 in chapter 2 1st John it is the last time and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come even now are there many Antichrists whereby we know that this is the last time. Even back then, they were living in the Roman Empire days. The beast that was terrible in the description, that was totally destroyed, is not coming back to life, or else Daniel is a lie. It's dead. Little children, is the last time and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. It really doesn't describe what an Antichrist is and know that there always been in existence these Antichrists. So you have to move forward to verse 22. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? Ones that deny that Jesus 
is the Christ. You don't even have to be part of Islam to be an Antichrist if you really want to think about it. If you don't believe there's a Jesus Christ, and he denies existence of the Son of God, guess what? You're an Antichrist. I already said that before in the past. He is Antichrist to deny it the Father and the Son. Right there in the Dome of the Rock, it makes that declaration. But you don't even need the Dome of the Rock for that. You can find that in the Quran and other hadiths that was written by the followers of Muhammad. Verse 23, Whosoever denied the Son, the same hath not the Father, but he that acknowledges the Son hath the Father also. Then you go to 1 John chapter 4, verse 3. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit, and this is that of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. Already is in the world. What does Antichrist mean? Instead or against Christ. Who in against Christ? Who declares that Christ is not the begotten Son of the Father? That's getting the world's attention these days as a growing evil empire with global ambitions to take over the world till everyone is bowing down to Satan? The second jihad, the second Islamic jihad, and it will be based around the lion, the bear, go back to the board, and the leopard. The lion, the bear, and the leopard. The kingdoms that covered the Babylon, Medo-Persia, and Grecian Empire. And I'm working on getting big maps here so I can make it really clear, but I already showed this in the past. Don't change the definition of what a beast is if Scripture has made it clear throughout what the definition is. Don't be creative with God's Word. Because if you are, let me heed you some warning. And this is where you need to be really careful, you self-expert know-it-alls. I think you have it all figured out using these Christian science fiction theories. Revelation 22, 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, I've read some things that, well, it means the whole Bible. And that's not what it means. The prophecy of this book is straightforward and original too. What book? A revelation. What John was running down from Jesus. For I testify unto every man that hear the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away in his part of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Be extremely careful in changing the definition of what God clearly has identified as beasts, which have the spirit of Antichrist. When Adam and Eve sinned and rebelled, that spirit began. And it's only developed strategically in ways which it disguises itself to blindside mankind of believing it doesn't even exist or in a fictional character that they write books about it now in Christian fi science fiction theory bases which they try to pass on as believable only for gullible, silly Christians that refuse to see the truth Thank God. Thank God. Come back to me. Thank God. We were one of the first. Not the first. We we're pretty close, though, to pointing out what the truth is. And I'm sitting here tonight telling you, most ministries, I haven't found one yet that has taken to the extension that this ministry has of trying to identify and present you the information and we're a long way from being done but we will get there God willing but if we don't it won't matter anyway we'll see the end result and we can say I told you so to any doubters that even might make it 
to the new Jerusalem someday. I told you so. That's just the flesh coming out now. But it was gratifying for just a few seconds. I, my prayer is that everyone comes into the knowledge and the truth of what God's Word says. And I don't have to rely on stupid theories. That's all they are, stupid theories. Don't change the definition of the beast. Play the song.